Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF, is a disease of uh, scarring in the lungs. And it's called idiopathic because we don't fully understand how uh, it occurs or what are the processes that uh, accelerate it or slow it down. Um, and for a long time, there hasn't been any effective treatment um, from a medical standpoint. People with uh, IPF usually present with an abnormal x-ray or they may come in with a cough or more shortness of breath um, and they usually have a CT that shows some degree of scarring in their lungs. Patients uh, may have what we call hypoxemia and that just means low uh, oxygen levels in the blood and that is treated with supplemental oxygen um, and the goal is to maintain an acceptable oxygen level in your blood uh, when you're sitting at rest, but also with activity. So in, in general, most people will benefit to a certain degree from pulmonary rehabilitation. And so the idea is to, to get the most out of the lungs that you have. Um, the, one of the problems with chronic lung disease is that people become progressively more debilitated because they uh, simply sit around because they get short of breath. And so just even that anticipation of exercise um, is a, a big uh, barrier uh, to, uh, to actually participating in any sort of activity. There are several uh, medical therapies that have been used in the past um, with uh, different levels of success. Um, so some patients may end up on uh, a small amount of steroids. Other patients are treated with uh, N-acetylcysteine or mucomist, um, which is an antioxidant therapy. So recently in late 2014, the FDA approved two new drug therapies specifically for treatment of IPF. Uh, the two drugs are uh, perfenidone or Espriot and uh, Nintetinib or OFEV. And both of these drugs are designed to slow down the rate at which lung function is lost due to scarring. So the exciting thing about these two new drugs is that for the first time we have a medical therapy that slows down the rate at which pulmonary fibrosis progresses. However, they don't uh, reverse the fibrosis that's already occurred. And in some patients, if their disease is advanced uh, and or, or progressive despite medical therapy, then lung transplantation may be an option. Lung transplant is really a, a life-changing uh, event for patients because they are now completely dependent on medications to prevent rejection and they can be more susceptible to infection because of these anti-rejection medications. Um, so long-term, those two uh, complications, uh, rejection and infection, um, are what we struggle with. We usually follow patients very closely, especially within that first year after transplantation, uh, because that's where a lot of the complications tend to arise. And um, so this, from a patient's perspective, um, they can expect frequent visits uh, at the clinic, um, frequent monitoring of their lung function uh, and lab tests, and also a, a very intensive uh, pulmonary rehab program that's designed to help them recover uh, from the transplant and, and get back on their feet. Thank you.